Hello, my name is Martin and this is 3D Printing Iceland. In this video I'm going to review the Palette 2 from Mosaic Manufacturing. So let's have a look after the intro. So first I want to state that I bought this device with my own funds. I was not contacted by Mosaic Manufacturing in regard to this review. That's just my own experience with the device I bought on the website. So with that out of the way, let's have a look at the device and what I think of think of it. The box it comes in is a big palette tube box and that was shipped in, in another box that was padded very well in the third box. So packaging and, and shipping was really excellent. It was very, very well protected. Uh, shipping from Canada to Iceland, so I was really happy to see how, how thought out the packaging was. Also from the inside of the box, you might have seen in the unboxing video, the padding inside the box, everything is packed in foam and, and everything is placed. They really make sure nothing will happen in, in shipment, so that's excellent. And here's the device. I got the Palette 2, and there's also a version called Palette 2 Pro that has a a uh, faster splice core and some more spare parts if you're a professional user you might want to have spare parts at hand um, but i decided to go with the palette 2 i'm not using this in a commercial environment so i don't mind if i have to wait a little bit for spare parts if i need them at some point i'm gonna show you a close-up of the device so this is a device you get and it has this nice cover that's fastened by magnets and it's really easy to take off and, and you want to see the inner workings and here's the device from inside and here you can see the filament path it has four uh, filaments uh, that goes in here 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 and here and they go uh, through this channel through the cutter into the splice core and out into the buffer area and out here with the scroll wheel so uh, the filament path is quite uh, intricate <laughs> into the device and uh, it comes from those four locations so the device takes in four different colors of filament or different material types depending on, on what you're doing so and here is a splice core and everything is really serviceable you can just take out the thumb screws to to get the core out if you have a jam or need to remove a filament also this part here with a, a buffer area there are three thumb screws you can get off um, you can easily get to if, if you have a broken filament or a leftover filament stuck in it's easy to access and same here with the input uh, you can take this cover off as easily with the thumb screws and everything is accessible from this top side you don't have to open up the box uh, to get to anything like in previous uh, versions of the palette you have to open up the cover but now I'll just take this magnetic cover take that off then you can see everything and if you get a broken filament you can see the, through the clear acrylic where it is it's a beautiful design and it's also awesome to just have the cover off and uh, what's uh, what's it work how it cuts the filament and fuses it together and it's a nice touch to have everything in clear acrylic so the power supply like it came with has a repl placement uh, plugs so for a uk plug or european or a us plug you just plug in whatever uh, plug you need and this power supply has this cable some people may have stated it's too short but uh, if it's too short for you it's very cheap to to get a <laughs> extension cord <laughs> at your local har hardware store then from the the box it has a like an outgoing uh, tube that connects into the box and this goes to your printer uh, they have a, a both uh, like a velcro type system that you can put on your printer or like in my case on the prusa they have a sdl file so you can just put this into and it has a like a rubber seal uh, that comes with a palette to put into that printed part and then it holds the, the tube in good place and it's really convenient. Uh, I've mounted the palette on my wall behind the Prusa and this goes from the palette into the Prusa printer. So this juggles along with the extruder moving back and forth on the printer. So it's really a nice way and this tube is in two lengths. This is the medium length and it also ships with a short 
uh, tube if you're having uh, like a delta printer with the extruder at the bottom of the printer and use the short tube in that situation if the extruder is stationary then you don't need the, the flexibility of the longer one so to slice models for the palette you can either use your the chroma uh, program and use uh, simplify 3d or slicer or key slicer or cura to prepare the models and then the, you run the decode through chroma that set up the the decode for the palette and you can export that to your uh, canvas hub or in my case i'm using octoprint octoprint instance with canvas plugin so that replaces the canvas hub so if you already have a octoprint for your printer uh, you don't need to buy the canvas hub so the alternative of using your own slicer and the chroma software is to use their online slicer that's called canvas currently that one is in beta and it has been working in some cases and some cases not so much and i'm not gonna re review uh, beta software <laughs> it's the working process so they have stated they are working on that version to get it out of beta so maybe at the time you watch this video the, the software is, is launched but for me i've been using slick 3r prusa edition and done some settings in that program to adjust for the palette and simulate the multiple extruders uh, as this has four inputs so you have to tell slick 3r to have four extruders so mosaic manufacturing has a pretty good information on how to set that up on their website and also on their Facebook page, Palette Plus Facebook page, there's a community there that can help you out with settings if you need. And I will probably do a separate video on, on my settings in, in Slick 3R Prusa Edition for the palette. So with this device, I, I printed out several things and, and I had some successes and some failures, of course. <laughs> and I've been trying out different filaments and, and, and what I found out uh, because of the, the filament path inside the device is, is quite uh, bendy. It's uh, difficult for a filament that is uh, very brittle. And I had some filament that was quite brittle. Uh, that was breaking up inside the inner workings so if you have a brittle filament that might not be a, a very good idea and also the filament has to be in quite good tolerance uh, because of the slice core it has to produce a slice that isn't out of spec for normal printers it can't allow very thick filament to go through because it, if the filament is too thick it won't slice correctly and get stuck in a slice core and i had this happened a few times for me in all cases the filament was going around 1.82 millimeters at that point so if if the filament you're using is is out of spec it's gonna get stuck <laughs> so use use high quality filament they have uh, tested out several types of filament like pla and patchy and abs and, and flexibles and so you can use different types of filament but i would highly recommend that you don't cheap out on the filament <laughs> and get good tolerance filament when you're using this device but my experience using the slicer Prusa edition and the chroma software has been pretty good I have a pretty good workflow uh, using that program exporting the g-code importing into chroma and uh, doing the settings for the purse block and assets in that program and exporting it to my autoprint instance and I will do a separate video on, on my workflow with the palette I think it's uh, maybe a little bit uh, advanced user if you if you're getting your first printer it's quite difficult to understand everything <laughs> maybe um, you have to know slicers settings and, and such things and how your printer works so it's it's uh, not for a for a beginner maybe you have to know a little bit about 3d printing before you start to use this device but uh, they have pretty good videos and, and information on their website and their YouTube channel. They have been very active creating YouTube instruction videos and they also had, had uh, at least a couple of live streams uh, explaining the device and, and their, their software and such. And they have been very active on, on Twitter as well. So the company is clearly making sure everybody is having a good experience. And talking about that, I'm going to show you some prints I've done and, and some failed prints <laughs> as well. Things are, of course, not perfect. And, and I had like two jams uh, destroying a print for me. And, and one issue with the slicer setting that was not fault of the device. I was just not 
uh, having the right settings in Slicer and that had some funky <laughs> artifacts in the purse block and I'm gonna show you that but let's have a look at, at some of the prints. So one of the first prints I did was this keychain. It's a model that Mosaic has prepared for you to test out uh, the calibration and in my case uh, the first calibration was working excellent and I got really clear uh, transitions and this was working pretty good. This was sliced, sliced with the, the Canvas online program. Um, here's the second print I did, just swapped out the purple for the dark blue and this was coming out excellent as well and very clear uh, transactions. Um, the perks plots for, for those two, two prints are, are here. They are really thin and mostly hollow and because the, the color changes is only in the part of the model. The purple block is, is not so not so bad. So here are, here are those for those two prints. I then made a multicolor version of my maker coin and I was uh, changing the model and I was not fully aware of how the palette would work with the multicolor so I had uh, had issues with the fine details in the letters but here you can see the face and the coin is, is, is coming nicely and I have my 3DP Iceland logo here in the back but I uh, did a mistake maybe or setting uh, because of this dark color uh, had a little bit effect on the lighter color so in this case the purse block might, might have needed to be a little bit bigger. bigger. Uh, some, that's something that you have to take into account if you're transitioning from a very uh, saturated color to a light one. It might need a little bit bigger purse block. Um, here's the purse block for this one. Um, then I did this print. This is like a, like a globe cut in a few pieces. And here you can see the colors and, and there's this different color here and the dark blue and, and light blue and, and purple. And here's the purse block for that one. So compared to the print, the purse block isn't so big. It, uh, it's looking really nice and there's uh, no issues with the uh, transitions. Uh, they're coming very clean out. So I was getting good results with this. So in this model I was trying out the settings in slick 3 to have a different material for, for the surface layer of the support. So here I have this color of the, the piece and using the same color as supports. But the interface layer in the support is a different material. This could be a good use case if you have water soluble PVA supports. You can have a, a small interface layer with that type of material. So you can clean that out very nicely. And this was just a showcase piece of, of using an uh, interface layer with a different different type of, of material. Here as well I had the issue with the purse block being uh, maybe too small because of the high saturation of color in this red one compared to the yellow one so there was a little bit of, of color bleeding and here's the purse block for this one mostly it's hollow uh, yellow for the bottom part and then on the top part it has the transitions so where it was going from the yellow to red and, and back again and here you can see how, how the red is going to, to the yellow and maybe not getting as yellow as the bottom part so you can see the the difference. So that's something that you have to take into account if the color is very saturated compared to the other one. Here I did a, like a four color Benshi. This is printed with polyalchemy and I want to have this filament in this case because of the colors are very saturated. Uh, this print was coming out excellent. Um, I just chose some parts to be yellow and some place to be pink and, and red and, and blue. And here's the purse block for this one. <laughs> it's quite quite big because it's four colors chasing throughout the model. And if you add more colors, the purse block will need to be bigger. So compared to a two color print, the purse block will get bigger because you add the more colors into it. But this printed out excellent and, and it was really clean transitions between the colors. So. That was coming out excellent. Then I did this fish. I put some pink and red and blue and, and yellow. And here is the supports. And I'm going to show you a, show you the purse block for this one. Uh, 
but before I got this one correct, I I was uh, not having the best slicer settings in Slick 3 r So this is the part block for for this print. Uh, it's compared to the print, the size is okay. But before I got that one, I had this print, and here you can see there's issues with the colors in, in several places. Um, uh, the purse block for this one <laughs> was like this, so this was quite big, and, and uh, there seems to be uh, a conflict with uh, Slick 3 r Prusa Edition with the infill settings using variable layer heights with supports. And that has to be set correctly, and I got uh, good information on the Facebook page for the palette to, to get from this uh, failure in color blending and this purse block in, into this model here uh, with this purse block. And I didn't have this issue before I, because all the other prints I did didn't have any supports. So when I turned on supports, I, I got this um, mix up of, of colors and this huge purse block. And so this was a, a failure, <laughs> but failure because uh, my slicer setting was not correct. So it's not a fault of the of the palette. Then uh, after after the fish print, I did this print, and this is a two part print. It's glued together here. Uh, this is a spine model with two colors. Uh, this printed with gold happens from filamentum and Iceland blue from filamentum. Uh, this print was coming out excellent. This print had uh, supports, and I'm going to show you the support. And um, here's a, here's a part of it. And I used the polyastomy uh, elixir PLA for supports. It came out really clean from the backside, as you can see. I could take this off in in just one piece, and um, then I had to dig out the supports from underneath the the spine parts here. And um, uh, because the polyalchemy was not sticking so much to the to the filamentum PLA, it was a really good choice for a support material. The best option would of course be soluble support material, but I don't have that at the moment. So I had to make do with the polyalchemy, and that was working great for me for supports. And as you can see, this print is absolutely beautiful. And, uh, was really good fun doing that. For this print, this printed as a two-piece part on the, on the print bed at the same time. Um, this was the purse block for that one. Um, it's it's quite, quite big but thin. Then I have some vase prints I did to test out different modes. Here, this print with a random uh, mode where you can select the input modes so it will just create filament in a random fashion. You just select what input to use and it will create filament based on, on the settings. This vase also printed in polyalchemy was in random mode and I accidentally pulled the bottom off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was just me being clumsy but uh, this one coming out excellent. I mean, this is printed in polyalchemy and this is just a piece of art. <laughs> so it's look, looking amazing but here you can see how, how the random mode is working. Uh, then there's a different mode called gradient mode um, where you can select how much filament you want to create and how to transition. So this one was starting with a lot of yellow, growing the red one uh, throughout the print. So this one was coming out excellent as well. And this is polyalchemy as well. Probably my favorite uh, mode of the device is the multi-spool mode where you can start a print and you have loaded up uh, filaments in all four inputs and when one filament runs out it automatically switches to the next one and splices that together and then that one, one runs out and and if you have like three half empty spools in the first two in the first three inputs and end up with a full spool in the fourth input you can print away all the all the half full or or somewhat finished spools and be sure to have a full spool in the end so you can print the rest of the print without having to worry so using up uh, spools that i couldn't use to to create a whole model um, this was a good good use case so i was cleaning up some leftover spools and uh, this is like probably the, my favorite mode of the gradient and, and random and, and the multi spool mode so now i have showed you a little bit about the device and, and my prints and 
my my thoughts uh, on this device what are those is it is it uh, working quite well or is it crap <laughs> but in my experience the the hardware device is really great uh, you have to take into account the tolerances you need for the filament and, and the filament path is quite curvy so filament needs to be in a good shape but um, the hardware has been working excellent for me i had the issue though in the first day or second day with a slice core and after contacting support they sent me a new one and it, the wire uh, snapped uh, for some reason i don't know what what happened but i contacted supports and so two days later i had a new core in my hands uh, shipped from canada so that was super fast support and i contacted uh, mosaic on on twitter and also through their support channel and they had excellent response so that was awesome to experience a very good service and like with all hardware or whatever you buy there might be some issues and, and on the live stream they were stating that uh, they would try to help people out as much as they can and in my experience uh, they did so i was quite happy with that so the prints i did were in most part successful i had uh, i think two jams uh, happening one in the spine part and one in some test i did and i think the first one was with when i had a brittle filament that got stuck in the mechanics and um, i didn't see that part and then i was doing a print and the filament caught up into the br broken part of the previous filament and, and it got jammed into the in the buffer so that was uh, something that you have to take care of if, if you have a like a broken filament uh, look very carefully throughout the filament path to see if, if there are some remains of, of filament the software for the octoprint as a plugin was working very nice for me i didn't have any special issues installing it they have good instructions so installing that on my octoprint and rebooting and connecting to the palette uh, was working quite quite well and the current state of the on online canvas plugin is in in beta so uh, that has been somewhat uh, flaky <laughs> experience but that's a beta software and you can't complain if a beta software is not working at this moment uh, hopefully they will get into final release of that software and then people can just how that goes for them but i don't mind uh, having a, some bugs in in a beta software as expected but what my verdict is is this something that everybody should get and, and how, 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 how is that? The, of course, this device costs uh, costs a little bit of money, and, and it's maybe not for a, like a beginner. Uh, if you're having your first 3D printer and have not used a printer uh, before, you you should get your feet wet before you buy this device. Uh, but after you got your your printer and slicer software set up and familiar with the processes, this is something that's a really good addition to a 3D printer. You can pretty much use this with whatever printer. You you just slice your decode and, and run it through the Chroma software and, and upload to the Octoprint Hub or the Canvas Hub. So the workflow is probably going to work with whatever printer you have. So so in my experience, this has been a, a great success. I, I have had really good time playing around, trying out different modes and, and, and seeing what works and, and doesn't work. I was trying to, to slice different types of materials together like nylon to PLA and that was maybe not <laughs> very good <laughs> because PLA doesn't stick to nylon. And, but you can have a look at their website, they have a good list of materials and settings. Uh, on what to what slices together and with what settings and you can adjust the pressure and temperatures and, and such things between slices so when you're slicing different materials there, there are different settings so my final thought is maybe you should have a look at this device it's been great fun and if you have a use case for it uh, to create multi-material prints uh, like like this adorable fish <laughs> it's a crazy good model and it's good, great to play around and like in my case doing the multi-spool models with my landscape models this is definitely a feature that i'm gonna benefit from and having the, the ease of mind with printing the landscapes because they use uh, quite a lot of filament and having uh, some spools lined up into the palette to use and then i can just go to sleep or to work and having the print surely done in the morning so that's a really nice feature and probably the favorite feature 
in, in my book. I think this has been a really great experience for me and I would recommend this device if you if you have the funds to, to buy it. it. It's not cheap, and, uh, but I think it's well worth it. It's a well thought out uh, device and the engineering on the physical device is, is excellent. So it's an amazing piece of technology. So this will be it for this video. I hope you like this video and please leave a comment and like and share and and all that so and subscribe to my channel so for now i thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one